In today's video, we're going to be talking about newly published or recently published paper that looks at helping with long COVID symptoms. If you've been following my content, you know that I'm really interested in, in what might be causing long COVID as well as what are the different scientists proposing of how it could be treated because we still don't know what's, how it's really caused and how to treat it at all. Can you believe it after so long? And what's also really interesting that this treatment or this basically intervention was via vagus nerve activation so and this is also via the device that i've been talking about this is the company that is sponsoring my vagus nerve science videos that's their exact device that was being used in this study this is a peer review study and it also was done specifically on women only and on top of that specifically also women that had um, were suffering long COVID and brain fog is one of those conditions that they all had because it was one of the inclusion criteria very very interesting also first paper that i looked how looked at had how vagus nerve neuromodulation might be helping with depression and anxiety and the results looked amazing so i'm going to get into that in detail and describe it as to why I'm actually pretty excited. I really want to start diving deeper in, into this as well. So my name is Dr. Michael Arashik of Neurogenomics. The video is sponsored by Neurosim, which is the name of the biggest nerve neuromodulation device. The reason why I bring it up right now is because if you're interested in this, the link for a discount for this device is available in the video description below. So please check it out. So I already done long COVID video using this very same device. So this is not the second paper, that, uh, that second study using this device specifically for COVID-19 COVID or so long COVID symptoms. So that's really, really interesting. In both of these papers, there seems to be improvement and it looks really, really promising. And the authors mentioned, look, vagus nerve neuromodulation is this emerging field of science in, and Really, there seems to be like a like a grassroots movement of scientists that are really getting into vagus nerve neuromodulation because honestly, it, the science so far looks amazing. It looks almost too good to be true. That's how amazing it, it looks. And the way I see it is that I'm starting to think like of the vagus nerve as a master regulator of your health. That's how fascinating it is. I know that down the road, there's, so we're going to be discovering something that might not be positive, but right now, it, the sci all of the science I'm looking in this direction is looking super interesting. So the authors have been calling, look, we should be investigating this type of bioelectronic medicine because this is what this area of medicine belongs into. We should be doing this on a much larger scale with clinical trials because we still don't have anything in terms of how to help people with long COVID. Now, why women specifically were used in this study it's because women are more likely to experience long COVID than men which i to some degree it is might be surprising because remember men seem to be more predisposed to get COVID 19 in the first place and yet it is women that seem to be affected more commonly with the long COVID. so what gives type of thing, right? And the authors were mentioning a few things. Well, first of all, apparently immune system of women is more sensitive to, to changes such as hormonal changes or gene expression changes as well. So there's that element, but they also mention anxiety and depression because those are predisposing factors for long COVID as well. And women tend to be diagnosed with these conditions more frequently than men. Not a good sign because like there's 50% of women in a population, you would want this to be at least more 50-50, right? So, so that's unfortunate. Something is still off. We're not getting this even Steven, but nevertheless, the authors wanted to see maybe this is one of the reasons why long COVID is more, more frequently observed in women. And they also checked about 40% of the women tested were, were indeed ha had anxiety or depression, right? So, so what did they do? They took 24 women they, they, who had these long COVID symptoms for between one to two years since their last acute infection. So long, long time. As I mentioned, they all had to be, ha had to experience brain fog. So, and that's another thing that was really fascinating about the studies because the authors of the study 
really, really focus crazy on cognition. So cognition is your ability to gain knowledge and understanding of things. So when you have impaired cognition, so that you can that can lead to like memory loss. And this is what happens behind brain fog, right? So impaired cognition. So they really wanted to dial in and they look at cognition in general, as well as variety of subcomponents of co cognition. So they uh, looked at stuff like such as attention, um, executive functions. They also look at your your working memory uh, uh, as well as um, as well as some um, it's more short-term memory. They also looked looked at um, another thing. They looked at is also how you, your speed of processing information. So multiple different different elements that they could then dial in on cognition. How is vagus nerve neuromodulation affecting cognition? So helping with the symptoms of brain fog. And they also looked at other secondary metrics, which were very interesting. Of course, they look at anxiety and depression because I already brought it up, right? And this is where I found it very, very interesting. The reason why is because they seem to have great results with very rapid, very little amount of intervention and results could last a long time. So super interesting for me because I could be wrong about this, but my general impression is that it's not easy to deal with either depression or anxiety in general. So I thought that was really interesting for that reason alone. But they also looked at insomnia and they also looked at fatigue and they also looked at loss of sense of smell. So something that I know a lot of people are also complaining about in, in terms of as one of the symptoms, long COVID symptoms that, that they're suffering from. And super simple intervention. These women basically use this device vagus nerve neuromodulation device twice a day for 30 minutes for 10 days that's it that's it and they measured all these different parameters that i just mentioned either right before the intervention right after immediately so after 10 days and then a month after that follow-up and that's where it was fascinating because literally and, oh, and of course, they also looked at what, what were the symptoms, the general symptoms before they, they even started. And as I mentioned, brain fog was the number one. Everyone had it. But 80% of these women also complained of fatigue. And about 60% of these women also complained as part of their long COVID, having more anxiety as well, having sleep disturbances as well, and or loss of smell and having headaches. So these are the most common symptoms. So once they started this, basically after what's amazing is that in almost every single instance, except one, even right after 10 days, there was an improvement. And then that improvement, what's really amazing is that it stayed for another month. And in some instances, it even got better one month after the intervention was discontinued. So, and then that included depression and anxiety. So absolutely fascinating. The only one element that they looked at, looked at was uh, that didn't have any impact was unfortunately the sense of smell. And the other one, fatigue, there was no immediate impact measured after, say, after like big impact measure after the 10 days, but it really, you could still see an impact a month later. So in every single category that they, that they measured. Anxiety and depression, the reason why I found it so amazing is because of the fact that look how little it took to have something that where the benefits lasted for so long. Really, really cool. And so I, I will, would like to study this further as well as to how does vagus nerve neuromodulation uh, help with this. And by the way, authors also mentioned, look, uh, vagus nerve neuromodulation is this emerging field of science where a lot of conditions are being now looked at how they could be helped via vagus nerve activation that also has been investigated with COVID and it did seem to help and it also has been investigated with long COVID with the same very same device that I'm discussing in this video that's the first video that was sponsored by by this company Neurosim that makes this device that was sponsored my video it was my first video that I've also done where I was showing that there is some improvement in long COVID symptoms with some intervention so so uh, there is already some precedent and this is how science is supposed to work you're supposed to start stacking cumulative evidence for to build your case right so that this is obviously very very promising and 
because this field of science is still so relatively new, that's, that's one thing that we don't even know. How long do these benefits even last after you have such intervention, right? And of course, one thing that, uh, that we don't know about is are the long, what are the long-term effects? That's usually typically the problem with, uh, with lack of data in, in medicine is the long-term studies. Why? Because they're very, very expensive to execute. So <clears throat> in terms of long-term studies, they're usually the, the most lacking type of information. So we still need to get more information as well in that context as well. What might be happening long-term when you use Vegas nerve neuromodulation? So they only did it for a month afterwards. Would be great to see even longer periods of time. Another, another perhaps uh, limitation was that they, um, they, I didn't see anything being mentioned about any risk factors in, in, or complications from use of the device. So I didn't see anything mentioned that on the paper, but also there was no control group. They literally just took women who had already long COVID who were suffering and they studied them directly. So then they, they didn't look at as to what might be happening with, uh, say, a healthy population in comparison to seeing the type of benefits that they saw on, on their scales. It very well might have been different effect as well, right? Because the starting position might have been different on such individuals. There is no such comparison. The authors mentioned that, however, that this looks so promising that we should be investigating this on a greater scale. And I think one day we will. I actually really think that uh, sooner or later, this is such a promising field of sciences that these, um, these trials are going to get bigger. It, um, it just simply, eventually there is going to be enough noise I would imagine that that's when you're finally going to have a larger scale studies, but numerous authors right now, when I'm looking at this literature, are calling for like, look, we should be investigating this on a much greater scale than, than that. And in that figure, one thing that I can mention in that figure that shows all of the improvements when, when it came to both the cognition as well as when it came to fatigue and depression, anxiety, as well as sleep, all of these improvements, you can see statistical differences are being shown there. And so what are statistical differences? Basically, statistical significance tells you what is the likelihood that the result you're seeing is simply by chance. And typically, we agree to 5% risk in terms of whether we're observing whether something might be real or not, or, or just a fluke as to what we're observing. We typically, we accept 5%, but the lower that chance, the better. So 1% chance that the result you're seeing is simply by random chance is even better than 5%, right? And then, and they designated the 5% with one star in between, say, the baseline or after the treatment or one month after follow-up versus two stars was for one 1% chance that there, that this, this improvement you saw was simply by chance, by fluke. Um, when I say by fluke, meaning basically if you just simply randomly measured, and there's no difference, but you, through randomness, you are observing this difference, 1% chance that, that randomly you would see this, that, that was designated with two stars, and then 0.1% it was designated with three stars. So 0.1%, that's really good because basically think about it, there's 99% 0.9% likely that the result you're seeing is real as opposed to just simply by, by random chance, right? So very, very positive, positive re results, uh, results here. And unfortunately about the smell, lack of improvement, but everything else improved and really, really, really uh, interesting stuff that way. So Mm, I will be continuing videos on long COVID uh, from other arenas as well, but I wanted to throw this in because again, fantastic <laughs> results that, that that's exactly the type of results I want to be seeing from uh, using this device. That's perfect, just perfect, exactly kind of what we want to see. I will also mention though, I mentioned that they, that they the authors, I didn't see any uh, side effects being discussed in the paper. I can tell you that in my own feedback, I have finally heard a warning for the first time, and it was from two different people that mentioned that when they use this device, so this is personal communication only, they did feel chest pains. So and what I would mention is that if you ever experience that, do not use the device anymore. Remember, this vagus nerve neuromodulation device, I discussed this in, in prior, prior videos, literally modulates what's happening 
neuronally inside your brain and that can affect that eventually affects how your heart performs as well heart rate variability so it can influence literally you can influence your heart directly using this biggest nerve neuromodulation device check it out so if you ever have such a side effect i would discontinue using this device however i can also tell you that one of those individuals also mentioned that they've had that type of symptom even before they started using the device anyway right they just didn't know whether that means maybe the device could be contributing it further i think it's just fair that i should always tell you um, not just the good stuff and the, or the amazing good stuff that I'm hearing about the benefits that people are telling me about, but also the warnings. And this is the first one maybe I heard that I wanted to, to share with you. But in case of this video, it looks really, really promising, uh, excellent data. This is the type of data I want to see. And, and we need to start exploring because we have nothing at the moment officially yet for for uh, for treatment of long long COVID. All right, I'm gonna wrap it up right here. So uh, if please give us a like if you like this content. Please subscribe to the channel to hear more about content like this and um, leave a comment about your own personal experiences with long COVID if you're unfortunately been afflicted as well and and or if you have your own experiences with the device. Please let us know. I I that type of information is very valuable to me from actual real people using it and see what's happening. You know, there's science. I love seeing the science to see what's happening, but I also wanna know what, what people are, are saying and, and with their own personal use. So leave a comment of that, uh, on that as well. And I look forward to seeing you in other videos dedicated to long COVID because I'm going to be making a big summary of all of this science I've been studying around long COVID including how it might be tested for and how it might be potentially treated based on the science that I've studied so far. All right, so stay tuned for that and I look forward to seeing you then. Okay, bye everyone.